Hello, everyone. Hello. Merry Christmas. It is so good to have so many of you click into this online Christmas Eve service. And we know that some of you are joining from mm. all around the world, and others of you, this might be your very first Christmas service ever or church yeah. service. So we just want to extend this welcome and say we're so glad that you decided to celebrate Christmas Eve with us. And if you have questions about the meaning of Christmas, mm -hmm. about what Christianity is, we're going to have people on staff ready to answer some of your questions and to tell you how you might be able to find us in person when we're allowed to worship in person here at 633 Kings Road in Quarry Bay. Yeah, and you know, as, tra as is tradition, we have a candle lighting moment when we sing Silent Night. So watch out for that and be ready. So let us enjoy the Christmas Eve service. Let's go. Yeah.
This is the redemption you've waited for. So celebrate and dance. You ransom captive, make most of this your second chance and lead the way. So Merry Christmas to you and your family on this, this Christmas Eve. Uh, I realize that we all have perhaps different levels of celebration and anticipation for Christmas. Some of us grew up with massive traditions and lots of energy that went into the holiday. Others maybe didn't even notice it that much. But, but whatever your story is, I, I really am glad that you're part of this, gathering to focus upon the, the true meaning of what Christmas is. Uh, in spite of all the gifts and the decorations and uh, the food that we all enjoy, uh, it would be great tragedy if we didn't think about the, the real essence of what Christmas actually means. You know, in my background, Christmas was a big deal. Uh, and as kids, I remember we were always so excited about what gifts we would find around the Christmas tree on Christmas morning. And we were always surprised by it, right? We would ask for certain things, but didn't know what we would get. And I can remember being overwhelmed but with getting my new white 10-speed bicycle. Or another year, getting a beanbag chair. That tells you how old I am. Um, but as a kid, all of those things were just so, such a great anticipating joy uh, to experience around Christmas. You know, as we read the Christmas story, as we understand what the Bible has to say about the origins of this holiday, the birth of Christ and its significance, uh, there's lots of, uh, of key players in it. Mary and Joseph and shepherds and wise men, uh, key people that are having a lot to say about, uh, about this significant event of the birth of Christ. It's filled with contrasts. It's filled with uh, unexpected revelations that had the people that were key players just mesmerized and confused. I mean, think about Mary, this young teenage girl that finds out she's pregnant. She's never been with a man. She cannot imagine, she cannot conceive of how this happened, but it would be a divine birth. And she's faced then with the prospect of, of losing her fiance, of trying to convince him of what seems like a lie, or Joseph, who for a moment anyway, had regrets. He's thinking, I've wasted my time. I, I'm not gonna be connected to this woman. And he makes plans to actually divorce her, to, to end their engagement. Uh, but the Christmas story helps fill in all the gaps. It, it comes in and it, it rounds out all the confusion and the lack of clarity that existed for a while for each of these people. It is a story of contrast. For Mary, this young, confused girl, going to be the mother of God, this one who is so respected and looked up to. From Joseph, being this guy filled with regret and shame, now becomes the father of Jesus, 
and lovingly takes Mary into his life. There's the, the shepherds. These shepherds, if in case you forgot, they, they had this looked down upon profession. They were kind of the low lives, uneducated, unsuccessful. All they could do was watch sheep. It was a smelly profession and nobody respected them. In fact, they were forbidden from actually giving testimony in a court of law because they were so sketchy. And yet God chooses amidst the backdrop of a boring night watching sheep chooses to send angels to speak to them and reveal to them early on what his big plans were. And the other end of that spectrum, from the kind of lowly shepherds, there enters in magi, wise men, kings, other versions call them. These three, at least kings, that come from the east, uh, they're brought in to uh, be a part of this Christmas story as well. And, And they are philosophers, educated, sophisticated types. It's as if God is weaving together this story to make sure that all of us realize it is our story. It is for us. Wherever we fall on the spectrum of of, of life, however together or not together our life may be, the Christmas story is for us. There's another key player. His, His name is Herod. And he's the king at the time. I want to pick up in Matthew chapter 2. It says, After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem. And they asked, Where is the one who's been born king of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose, and we have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed. (laughs) He was threatened. What do you mean there's another king? I'm the king. I am sitting in this palace that I have built and I am the king. And they come and inquire, where's this new king? Understandably, he's disturbed. But we know from other instances that that Herod was just a insecure, threatened man. He was known, in fact, to kill his relatives if he suspected that they had uh, any plans to take over or to not respect him. He got rid of wives. Uh, He did the unthinkable. In fact, if we fast forward the story, uh, we know that he sends out an edict later to, to have all of the male children born within that area, under two years old, uh, have them killed because he's so threatened by the arrival of Jesus. So Herod in this scene is an actual king. And he has built what at that time was the the most um, outlandish palace known. It was an architectural feat. In fact, just outside of Bethlehem, Herod had kind of scraped off land from other nearby hills and mountains to build his own man-made mountain. Flat on the top, it looks kind of like a volcano. But on the top, then, he would establish his palace, and that would be one of four that he would use to live in, to be royalty. It's right outside of Bethlehem. (laughs) It it is no mistake, then, that we see the grandeur, the, the physical palace that the king lives in is actually shadowing, casting a shadow on this little dingy barn where Jesus, our king, will be born. Again, it's a story of contrasts. And so Jesus is born to Joseph and Mary in a humble setting, surrounded perhaps with farm animals and hay, unlike royalty, certainly what what Herod enjoys. And Herod is threatened. (laughs) He he calls the Magi back and he says, I want to find out the exact time when that star appeared. And, and I want to know exactly where Jesus was born. And he, he says this, so that I may too go and worship him. The Magi presumably have every intent of going back to Herod, a man who wants to worship this new king or so they thought. But see, God would intervene. God would send uh, a, a dream 
uh, to speak to the Magi directly and saying, don't trust him. Don't go back there. Go back another way. God would send a dream to Joseph after Jesus is born to say, do not go back. In fact, flee because Herod has sent this edict out to, to kill all the babies. <laughs> See, God's plans are not thwarted. As the Magi find baby Jesus, they find Mary and Joseph. We're told that they do three things. We're told that they bowed down, that they worshiped him, and they presented him with gifts. They bowed down symbolic of their own um, physical bodies taking on a posture of humility, of, of leaving aside their own royalty, their own sophistication. They physically represent a humility before a baby. Think about that. And they worshiped. <laughs> what is there to worship? It's a baby. But they knew that this was not an ordinary baby, that this had been prophesied, it had been spoken about, and that they had been supernaturally led to this scene. And that was all the evidence that they needed. So they didn't just bow down, they then worshiped. They recognized who this Jesus was, even before he had ever spoken or performed a miracle. And then they offered gifts. They gave of themselves a provision that would actually be very practical for Mary and Joseph in the coming years. They would take this gold and frankincense and myrrh and they would use it for their, for their provision, for their livelihood. But the bigger story probably is that they came and they, they offered gifts. As you exchange gifts on this Christmas, I pray and hope that you have a great time doing that. I'm all for a gift giving. Um, I pray as well, though, that you will receive this great gift that God has for us. When those angels spoke to the shepherds who were in the fields all alone at night, they sang this song and they declared the gift that God has for us. Let me read for us in Luke chapter 2. It says, they, they said this, glory to God in the highest heaven. And on earth, peace to those on whom his favor rests. That word peace has great significance. The Greek language, it's, the word is irane. And it had three main uses in the Greek language. One was just a greeting of hello, goodbye. They would say irane, irane, peace. Uh, it, it also symbolized when there were two pieces of fabric that were ripped uh, to put a seam back on those two fabrics to join them together was to irane, to sew them together. But perhaps the greater concept is this relational piece. It was also used to talk about harmony among people and harmony with God. And so when the angels say, God came to give you peace, it was to give you a peace in spite of circumstances a peace that comes from God himself, a peace that comforts, a peace that abides, a peace that is actually God himself dwelling within us. What a gift that is. So amid all your gifts, amid all of the food, amid all the gatherings, make sure that you afresh receive the peace that God has for us all this Christmas. God bless you and Merry Christmas. The world before the birth of Jesus was in darkness. As one popular Christmas song puts it, long lay the world in sin and error pining. The world was in darkness, spiritual darkness. So the birth of Jesus, heralded in the heavens by the stars, was the Father's plan to send his one and only Son, Jesus, to shine through, to break through the kingdom of darkness and to establish the kingdom of God. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. This candle represents the light of Jesus, the light of the world, 
dispelling the darkness around us. Light represents the glory of Christ and the gospel of Christ. So as we light our candles in just a moment, think of the glorious message of the gospel spreading out and being passed on and shared throughout the ages from the disciples and Jesus' first followers all the way to us today. As you share your candlelight with someone next to you, think of how you can share the gospel with someone else too and pray that the good news of Jesus Christ will be heard in our city and by everyone around the world. Let's light our candles now and all join together as we sing Silent Night. Christ, our Savior, was born. That's a beautiful thought and the meaning of Christmas and a great way to end our service. 
Well, we have one more thing to do before we go, and that's the tradition that we have of taking a selfie right after singing Silent Night. And normally when we're in a room together at, at 633, it's a beautiful thing to see the room just lit in soft candlelight. But even though we can't be together, we're still sharing this moment together online. So please do go ahead and take those selfies. Remember when you post them to use hashtag IslandECC so we can all share those candlelight moments together. I'm gonna to take one here with our camera crew. All right, look forward to seeing those. Let me close in prayer for us now. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the gift of your son Jesus at Christmas. Our wonderful counselor, mighty God, Prince of Peace, Everlasting Father, Emmanuel, God with us. I pray that we would all know Jesus Christ, your son, in a deeper and closer way this year. It's in his precious name we pray, amen. Well, thanks so much for spending your Christmas Eve with us. We're so happy that you joined us, especially if this is your very first time joining us for an online service at Island ECC. If you have any questions about anything you heard tonight or about our physical location in Quarry Bay, Hong Kong, or about Jesus Christ and how you can have a personal relationship with him, we would love to hear from you and we welcome your questions. Just follow the QR code that you see at the bottom of your screen. Well, as a little child named Tiny Tim once said, God bless us, every one of us. Have a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year.